Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special legal compliance webinar that Kaizen Synergy Law Firm is running. My name is Nihal Samara, I'm the General Counsel and Legal Director here. Today, we're going to be looking at the legal compliance obligations uh, for the COVID safe plan. The fact that the coronavirus is not going to go away quickly, and it is something that's going to be with us for some time. So with that, we've seen how rapidly things can change in Victoria and also in other states as well too. And also equally looking at the changes that states and territories are doing in terms of um, managing their stage one, stage two, stage three processes. And we've seen the Commonwealth and the respective state governments um, coming up with their own plans. One of the things that companies across Australia have been asked to do is to come up with a COVID safe plan for ensuring that services that they deliver are safe and effective. And your agency, like many that are joining us from around the country today, are required to actually look at having a COVID safe plan. One of the challenges that we've seen is that there is a lot of information out there um, and it's actually quite confusing at times of what you need to do and when you need to do things as well. So part of this session that we are running is to actually go through some of the key requirements that your agency needs to or should be looking at already. Uh, some of the timelines that are being uh, penciled in, so to speak, of when these things need to occur, but also looking at what actually a COVID safe plan actually looks like. Um, I've actually added in to this particular slide um, running this while doing business. And the reason being because it's hard enough at the moment to actually run businesses, um, to run services. And if not run properly, the COVID safe plan itself is literally another thing that your company needs to do on top of trying to navigate this very difficult period of time. And that being said, there are obviously significant um, job losses. There are significant other challenges going on. Um, and some companies have approached us and said, having a COVID safe plan is literally another thing on top of what they actually need to do as well. So part of the COVID safe plan um, and this webinar that we are running is to um, give you some of the tools, give you some of the guidance around this as well too. Um, and also um, record this webinar and it will be made public and available uh, through our YouTube channel. We've actually been running COVID safe plan updates all the way throughout this pandemic um, to keep agencies informed about what their key legal compliance obligations are for you to, to be across. So that said, we always like to pay our respects to the elders past and present upon the lands on which we all meet. While this session is being run by a webinar, we do pay our respects to the traditional owners accordingly. Now, a couple of housekeeping things. We will be recording this webinar all the way up to the Q&A part of the session, um, where we do open up the phone lines and happy to stay on the line and answer any questions that people might have. If you don't feel like talking at that stage, then you can um, type questions into the um, chat panel um, that you have up in front of you as well too. And we will get to those throughout the session as well um, that you might have. Um, with it, I can already see that there has been another question that has been also just asked um, in terms of, uh, um, let me just bring this up, um, a agency has asked, we are a community hub that hires its hall to groups to run yoga classes. Um, there are courses that um, are run, what are their responsibility as um, tenants? That's a really good question and I will just jump onto this um, question because it does cover off agencies where there are shared spaces. With a, where you may have a community hub that hires its halls to groups to run yoga classes or you might have a agency that also subleases um, parts of your building out or you might even have shared common spaces as well. 
um, it is still a requirement that each uh, company or agency has a COVID safe plan. But more importantly, if the community hall is under your control as well too, um, then generally your community safe um, COVID safe plan should cover those areas. And any tenants that you have that actually share those spaces um, are actually obliged to meet the safe distancing requirements. Um, and I will cover what some of those are, um, but I'll address that now is the 1.5 social distancing rules. Also under WorkSafe, there are specific um, density, um, one to person per four square meters and, and the likes. Um, so quite simply, those um, tenants are required to follow those rules as well too. And if uh, if they don't, then at the moment, certainly, you know, to use an example, in uh, Victoria and, and other states equally as well too, then there are fines for not maintaining those um, specific rules as well too. Um, so but we will cover that. That's a really great question, which is why I picked that up now. So as part of the three-step framework, um, many of you would have seen that the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, actually um, held this document up. It outlines the step one, step two, step three um, process. But in saying that, each state and territory actually has its own um, mandate to, for, to when it actually goes through that process. And we're seeing that now at the moment in Victoria, um, there's um, increased lockdown measures being put in place. Um, there's also social distancing and suburbs that are being identified. Um, you compare that to other states, Queensland, um, South Australia, Victoria, um, that have equally put in um, advice on travel uh, restrictions and uh, to, um, to Victoria and certain suburbs as well too. Um, equally, some states have also opened um, and increased the number of people or gatherings and the likes for stage two and stage three, as you can see as part of this and indicated very clearly what those look like. So we're actually going to go through and look at some of the documentation that you actually need for your company and what you actually need to do to actually run this as well too. Um, in terms of what I mentioned before, um, some state examples, for example, South Australia um, has uh, provided some guidance on completing and implementing your own um, COVID safe plan. Um, they've identified who must complete a COVID safe plan, um, where you may provide personal care services, public entertainment options, uh, driver instructions, on-site purchases, etc. So there's a whole list of agencies that they've actually said, look, what, um, that they must complete it as well too. Equally in Queensland, when you look at it, um, the state government there, has said at all stages, all businesses should have their work health and safety plan up to date, including strategies to manage COVID-19. This is an existing internal plan not needed to be submitted to the Chief Health Officer for approval and should be made available upon request. And this is taken from the COVID-19 Queensland um, State website this morning. And equally, they've got um, their staged uh, plan in place. You can see stage two to take effect for obviously from the or took effect from the 1st of June 2020 is what the plan is um, and also stage three from the 10th of July. You compare that with um, states like Victoria where um, Victoria has actually extended its state of emergency um, to the 12th of July at this present time and you can start to see that we're now getting an overlap between what states and territories across Australia are actually doing. And this is um, in spite of what the Prime Minister has given as part of the stage one, stage two and stage three step-by-step um, -step plan. Equally in Victoria, um, so we've covered South Australia, Queensland just as an example, and Victoria is another example. Victoria has put out a, the Victorian government has put out a Victorian community sectors plan and given some indications of what these should look like, covering service delivery, workforce and facilities. Um, and again, looking at the different stages that they're uh, working towards within the community services sector space. 
So one of the uh, troubles that agencies have got themselves into is trying to manage with all of these competing, competing interests. Quite simply, what we have done within Jemba to assist agencies to do this is to bring this together under a single dashboard and all of the attendees that are joining us today um, can get access to the demo site to actually see this specifically for your agency and it'll actually help you manage this whole process. What we have as part of this is the ability to actually manage your disaster, your pandemic and disaster management obligations. And you can effectively, as we've taken the stage one, stage two, stage three, things like tenancies, responsibilities, and checklists that you need to have can all be found under the COVID um, dashboard for your agency to access. What you can quite simply do is load this up. You can see that we've got the COVID safe plan steps in place. Um, there are specific steps which I'll take you through around this. And again, all of this information is being made available throughout the course of the webinar and effectively looking at policies, work health assessments, COVID safe plan requirements, and really taking a checklist approach for your, um, for your company to be able to do. It includes some of the very easy references and we've already had the question around um, community hubs that hires its all to groups and runs courses and the likes and you might have other tenants and again there are very clear which many of you have sent to us as well too work health and safety checklists for your agencies to do in terms of managing all of this information throughout the COVID-19 process. Now with it there are a whole range of other checklists that we've loaded in and effectively what you're able to do is at each stage is manage the process for your agency and it gives you really the minimum requirements that you need to do from a legal compliance point of view. It covers your audits that you need to do each month or week as part of that process. It looks at your policies that you should be having, templates that you should be having, and also your quality standards that you need to utilise as well. And if any guidelines change, whether that be from the state health department in your state or territory, whether that be directly from Safe Work Australia as part of their guidelines on the regulatory requirements, whether there's new guidelines coming out of the Commonwealth Department of Health, that will feed directly into this system for you as well and it makes it just really simple for yourselves to manage and one of the things that we've seen when you look at this whole COVID safe plan is agencies are worried and companies are worried that even if you're a small um, takeout coffee shop right through to a large hospital health service running multiple sites you all need to have a COVID safe plan to ensure that your services can be delivered the problem is that you can compliance can actually take over the actual service delivery and you could end up doing more work on this than actually focusing on running your full business. So what we have done is simply open this up for agencies like yourselves to utilise, cut through all the paperwork and give you ready access to this um, dashboard that simply makes it easy for yourselves to manage. So that said, what we are looking at is what is in this COVID safe plan that your agency needs to look at. Now, let's run through just some of the core requirements that you should be looking at. Now, this information is not something that our law firm has actually invented. Um, we've actually gone through uh, all the Commonwealth state and territory um, guidelines, COVID safe documents, work safe documents, other regulatory requirements. And what we found quite simply is that there's a lot of common information that's being requested. And we've summarized some of this down. So let's have a look at it. The first thing that um, you're advised to look at is checklists. Now the checklist is around requirements for keeping workers safe, requirements for social distancing on identifying how they can implement social distancing measures in compliance with government uh, public health directions. And that is um, certainly one of the questions that come up just before uh, around the community hub, again, around the tenants. 
And again, it's important that you make sure that social distancing applies. And in that case, it is around the tenants. There's also the requirement for keeping your workplace clean to stop the spread of COVID-19 and the requirements for workers and customers um, or clients, if you're in the community services field, to maintain health and hygiene. Again, Safe Work Australia has published examples of checklists which you can use. And so what we're actually telling you here is no different than what you'll actually see with WorkSafe. What we've done is actually bring this together for you to make it just simple and have the information in one spot. Workplace Health and Safety has also published a range of guidelines in different states and territories. This is taken from the Queensland Group, um, which help explain to businesses what your industry-specific duties are and obligations under work health and safety laws in response to COVID-19. Now, part of the next step is around looking at what controls you have in, and processes you have for managing hazards that you might see. And there are three controls that you should be having in place. The first one is around substitution, the second is isolation, and the third is administrative. And firstly, when you look at substitution, what they're talking about here is substituting things like handling of cash with providing contactless payment methods or enabling workers to work from home where work can be done from home as well. So that's sort of a substitution type method. The other one is around isolation. And isolation talks about enforcing social distancing requirements, but providing for barriers and screens to isolate workers and customers or clients um, where appropriate. And the last one is around administrative control measures. And again, this is around providing training, supervision and instructions on how to manage the risk of COVID-19 within the workplace, negotiating changes to work to allow social distancing to occur, negotiating change of rosters to allow people from working from home on a bi-weekly roster, for example, or ensuring that non-essential meetings or trainings are provided by video conferencing. Now, this is not mandated. This is just examples of what has been given. Now, one of the real challenges that we've seen from across the board for agencies is around managing workforce. The challenge for companies during the coronavirus pandemic and even during the lockdown and um, now as measures are being slowly eased is the management of workforce and either keeping in contact with staff or also um, staff feeling that they need uh, to work from home and not giving employers the opportunity to actually look at um, a mixed method if that's the case because quite simply there are some companies where employees simply can't work from home. Um, examples of that um, include where you might be providing outdoor community-based services. You can't well provide a work from home opportunity in, in that case. So there are changes in terms of service delivery that some companies need to look at and it may not suit everybody. Equally, once you start to have a look at these processes, it's the how do I do this part that we're actually going to look at. So it's great that the um, governments provide these examples around substitution or isolation and administration, but really the challenge for companies like yourselves is the how do I do this? What do I actually tell staff to actually do this? Not simply say, okay, this is yet yeah, a great, this is what I need to do, but how do I actually manage this process? And we're going to come to that. Let's just cover the guidelines part first. So the other part that we've also looked at is the best practice guidelines. And again, when we refer reference this back to the Queensland um, government, they have provided these sheets which we've taken and lifted this information from, which can equally be applied to other states as well too. And effectively they cover a number of different requirements that a COVID safe plan needs to take. These include firstly um, having a process to manage and conduct your business um, around specific measures that your company should put in place to, to best practice and best manage um, the COVID safe um, 
virus within your agency as well too, such as involving social distancing, public health record keeping obligations if you're a cafe or, or an outdoor gym, for example, and also practicing good hygiene. And we'll come to what these measures actually and how what you actually need to do. But this is effectively what they've said. It should include guidance on how your company should act in a situation where a person or a worker presents with symptoms of COVID-19 or is diagnosed with COVID-19. And you'll find that in stages two, three, as we're moving through this plan, that this will be measures that will actually show you how to do it. Equally, conditions of entry, so if people are coming into your business as well too and visiting your company, again, um, how you're actually managing the flow of customers in and out of your business, um, and also the um, way you, which you might refuse entry and service to people that show um, COVID-19 symptoms. It may be the use of waiting rooms or it may well be that you do not allow them in, and we'll come to that as well too in this session. It should also include the rights and responsibilities of businesses in refusing entry and service, as well as tools to help um, customers um, have conversations with your staff as well. Customer interaction, again, from your um, company, it's important to consider the ways that you can safely interact with customers. Um, completing services and payments, again, state governments um, suggest that you should consider ways to safely complete services. Um, pack orders, for example, carry out transaction payments, um, and also allow people to um, safely accept and provide deliveries, whether not just be over the counter, but even if you do provide um, services and other deliveries. They also talk about communal facilities and spaces, um, and following on from the question that we had right at the start, again, one of the key requirements in a COVID safe plan is to consider ways that your company can safely manage communal facilities and shared spaces while meeting hygiene requirements. And your COVID safe plan should explain steps a business can take to ensure that non-permitted gatherings do not actually occur near or on the premises as well. And in the past set of webinars that we've run, we've actually covered some of the fines that um, Queensland, South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales um, are actually imposing as part of non-compliance with um, directions provided by the chief medical officers in each respective state and territory. It's also important to look at managing emergency evacuations and egresses. And again, if there is an emergency such as a fire alarm or uh, other emergency situation where you need to evacuate your building or the likes, then again, a plan should include this process as well. Equally, staff practices, again, um, ar around limiting physical interaction between workers um, who may be on site as well too. There's specific rules for carpooling that's also provided as well, um, and also working from home and travel restrictions that you may want to put in place. Lastly, according to different um, state government guidelines, um, your company should have workplace specific training uh, which staff are required to complete and again i'll show you what this looks like um, but you can start to see when you look at the COVID safe plan and this is just the second part of what for example we've pulled from the queensland government guidelines around this at this time all of a sudden th there is a significant um, time and um, resources that your company may need to go into to actually putting all of this together. But when, and it will also change as well. So as you move through um, stages two, three, um, obviously in Victoria, there is um, further lockdown measures that are in place. The army as of yesterday was brought in and then, um, and then asked to, um, services weren't required. So even at the state government level, you can actually see that there is a lot of flux and change around what you're needing to meet. And what we see now is that for companies that there is a lot of expectations being put on in terms of developing the COVID safe plan. Equally, what they've also asked um, companies to do is that your COVID safe plan should also include information on how in this case, the Queensland Chief Medical or Health Officer's Public Health Directions apply to your company. But this is equally the same across in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, again, where your company is based. 
you need to incorporate and include changes in directions that you might need to also look at. Equally, looking at things like reviewing risk management, audits and compliance checks, as well as quality standards that your um, company may need to do, especially in the health and community services sector as well. A statement of compliance um, where you can put up a sign um, with a date and time um, that's been requested to actually say that you have a COVID safe plan in place. So that's people that are visiting um, your company or getting access from your company are actually aware that you're actually complying with your own legal compliance obligations as well. And there may be other information that should be included as part of your COVID safe plan in terms of um, frequently asked questions that people might ask yourselves um, and any other contact information that they may need to have a look at. So you can see as part of this, there is a lot of work that needs to generally go into a COVID safe plan that your company needs to meet. With that, what we have done in the Gemba platform that each of you can have access to out of today and look at the demo um, site for your company is to have the step one, step two, step three plan. It incorporates the Commonwealth government's direction into each of these and covers all of those key areas that I've just mentioned to you before. What it means is that then as you're working through it, you're literally doing it as part of a month to month process. If it needs to be ramped up and there are new directions coming from the Commonwealth or the relevant state government or regulatory agency, this is fed directly back to yourself as well. With it, there are two other things that you should be looking at, which is really around the plan, as well as the policy document and pandemic forms that your um, company should be looking at. And what do those effectively look like? Well, firstly, when we look at this, as all of you are directors and officers of your company, there is the requirement that you as an officer and director of the company exercise due diligence to ensure that your employees comply with their duties and obligations. And this is under direction uh, from the Australian Government Department of Health. And that includes following things like your work health and safety obligations and ensuring that your workplace is properly resourced, but also um, manages its hazards and risks appropriately. Now, with that, what that means is that you've got an obligation to effectively review your business policies, procedures and reporting process to ensure that you address the risks of COVID-19 and update these as required. It's also a requirement that you provide instruction and training to workers on the things that they need to do to help manage the risk of COVID-19 spreading in the workplace too. There are some underlying principles that we can equally apply fairly easily across this, and this is as we move through stage two and stage three. There are effectively four specific principles. One is maintaining the 1.5 distancing and good hygiene, staying at home if unwell, frequently cleaning and disinfecting communal areas, and also keeping your COVID safe plan for workplace and premises up to date as well. Now, with it, one of the questions that companies come back to us and say, okay, yes, the government have asked us to have a COVID safe plan, but why is it actually important? Well, the fact is that COVID-19 will be with us for some time. So it's important that your business has a plan and continues the plan to keep your workplace healthy, safe and virus free. What's equally important is that agencies of companies have contacted us and gone, yes, but we need to have a balance around this because if we just focus on the COVID safe plan that the you know that the government expects us to do then literally it's hard enough to run our business at this time as well too where staff in you hear about it Qantas yesterday um, released some 6,000 jobs um, there's other companies that are struggling it's very difficult um, time and the last thing we need to do is do something on top of this but the fact is that on one hand they're COVID-19 is simply not going to go away for some time. So let's give you the tools, make this simply easier for you. 
So the COVID safe plan is simply going to ensure that staff are kept safe. It means that community and services that you deliver are being supported and services delivered. Um, if you need to change business services, then you can and manage it through here and also accessing support to continue to deliver services. And one of the things that we've looked at from a legal firm update for agencies is to look at providing updates around the job keeper. And also there is a directive announcement um, made um, by the prime minister a few weeks ago around looking at industrial relations and incentives um, to actually boost jobs as well too over the coming six months. Um, and one of the things that we are doing for companies like yourself is to make sure that the legal updates are actually sent to you so that you can start to access some of the um, in initiatives that are being released and when they do get released from the Commonwealth so you don't effectively miss out or have to submit these late. So let's go through and have a look at the legal compliance obligations and some of the work tools that you can use to run through this. So effectively, when we look at the three-step framework provided by the Commonwealth as an initial guidelines, we follow the col column on the first, um, on the left-hand side, and you can see step one, step two, step three running down the left-hand side. As part of that, there is the um, second line item in each of these saying workplaces develop a COVID safe plan. And this is repeated from step one to step two to step three. Now, some of the consistencies between these um, step plans is that we've moved through step one for most states and territories. Obviously, Victoria is having to review, revoke back to lockdown measures. Um, but effectively, we're looking at non-work gatherings of up to 10 people, up to five visitors at home in addition to normal residents, and work from home if it works for you and the employer, obviously, and having a work, um, a COVID safe plan. Step through, step two is effectively um, starting to lift some of these requirements where it goes from non-work gatherings up to 20 um, and then step three, non-work gatherings up to 100 and larger gatherings considered and effectively the return to the workplace. Now, when we look at some of the information that's out there at the moment, it is no wonder and unsurprising why so many companies are confused and have come to us to actually um, get support around just making things life easy. So you can have the reference guides to Safe Work Australia. You've got the roadmaps that you've seen and there's different roadmaps from different states and territory governments. There's also the three-step framework, which is another uh, five-page document issued by the Commonwealth as well too. There's the app that people are asking, do I need to download this as well? And there's all these other signs and, and information that's also there as well. So what we have done to make it simple for agencies, and we can tell you how we've actually done this because it's really, I'm going to say, not a secret at all. We've, we've actually published this information previously. What we have done is actually take a quality standards framework, and we're going to look at the resources and tools that are available that you can use and run your own company as well. So what we've done is take a three-step process. We actually liked um, the one of the quality standards um, agencies called Quip, um, and again, this is information that they put up for the first um, for the first uh, line, and then we've um, slightly adjusted it to show you how it works. So effectively, there are the three steps. It's around looking at the legal compliance and policy directives. It looks then at the assessment of the what specific practices and standards or benchmarking that needs to occur and then looking at areas for improvement that your agency can actually quickly adopt. And that's how effectively the COVID safe plan for us has actually been designed. And it's, it can literally be rolled out to your company today. With that, the compliance part of it, when we look at it, is to look at what are the legal compliance obligations you have. We've then looked at what are the service gaps around, okay, if you identify what the gap is, can we quickly fill that? To make sure that you meet your COVID safe plan obligations really quickly without having to reinvent the wheel all over again. 
And you'll find that this is in fact utilized as part of a quality cycle. Um, it's used by health and community services agencies and audit agencies in terms of how you actually do things. So that way you're looking at what you need to do. You're identifying if there are any rectifying any non-compliance areas, identifying what you can do, filling the gap, and then reviewing that again. This process we're actually going to keep on using as we move through from step one in Victoria to step two, um, but then for other companies based in other states where they're also already sitting in step two and step, and then moving to step three, then effectively reviewing this and doing a review as soon as um, the dates are released for the next stage that you're going through. So what you're doing is building up your, your capacity within your agency to move from step one to step two, then step two to step three, and then step three onwards. Now keep in mind, this also works if lockdown measures are um, needed to be announced and there's a second wave or third wave maybe of this uh, COVID-19, this can equally be implemented quickly and reversion measures being done. So how does this look on a diagram to kind of explain this to you? So with it, what we've looked at starting on the left-hand side, uh, we've looked at the legislation. We've looked at the biosecurity legislation, the omnibus legislation, the public health determinant legislation of what actually applies to companies across Australia. Equally, there's end policy directives that have also been issued from the Commonwealth Department of Health around what employers should do like yourself. There's also checklist tools that are issued from Safe Work Australia as well too, and also the relevant state and territory pandemic plan. That compliance section can then turn into a self-assessment tool that your agency can use or your company can use. That gives you the checklist. That checklist basically gives you a series of items that flow into the pandemic checklist that I've shown you, and this is the screen that I showed you at the start, and you then know quite simply that you meet your compliance obligations, you meet your policy requirements, whether it be from the Commonwealth or state, and then effectively you can quickly identify from the checklist what areas you need to improve. Equally as part of that, on your dashboard, which you have access to, which I will um, send out login details for you to utilize and have a look at the demo version for yourselves, it gives you the checklist tools to actually see. But effectively, this is something that you can access as well too. If you go on to Safe Work as well, you can look at some of the assessment tools. You can look at some of the other state government tools. The part is that if it changes and you need to keep up to date as well too, and again, you need um, a place to store all this information. That's what really Gemba does for you. Make it nice and easy to actually go through this process. So with it from here, you can actually then load that information in as part of your self-assessment. You've met your compliance requirements. The self-assessment can be done and then you identify the areas for improvement. Now at a minimum, there are a number of key things that your agency needs to look at and company needs to look at at a minimum based on Commonwealth direction. Now these are listed here. The first one is employers should have policies and procedures and technology to support employees to work from home if possible. Second is employees are supported to work from home where they can and there should be social distancing rules which we've seen in place and try to ensure that the four square meters per person and 1.5 meters between people um, are maintained where possible. This means that you should discourage carpooling between employees to and from work and also promoting good hygiene as well. Now, in it, there are a number of, um, in total, 14 specific directives. Um, the Commonwealth has suggested that you undertake frequent cleaning and disinfecting of workspaces and picking up the question that the community hub asked right at the start of this um, webinar. Again, it is a process that your agency should be looking at work communal uh, frequent cleaning of workspaces and especially shared spaces as well too. Um, also, um, the um, Commonwealth have suggested you modify rosters, avoid non-essential travel, um, and also train staff on hand respiratory hygiene 
and social distancing and also educating staff about the early signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Now, some of the things that we've seen around this is agent, companies and agencies saying, geez, where do we actually find you know, training sessions and how do we know that it's reasonable? Well, what we have done under the Gemma College, and this again, you've got access to YouTube videos as well, but again, we've actually loaded this information in to your uh, profile so you can actually go in and it's available to all staff so this way they can actually access their own training especially around the specific commonwealth directions on um, the training staff on hand and respiratory hygiene and social distancing to ensure that you've done all that you can to inform your staff about these particular requirements. So what you can see you've got the information all in one spot without having to waste time and go and find this information. And you can actually access that even later today when we send you access to um, your demo dashboard. Simply keep, click on the Gemba 360 College button and this will open up um, this training session here and you can actually go in and have a look at some of the modules around that. And that specifically covers um, what the Commonwealth has asked around training staff on hand and respiratory hygiene and also educating your staff about the early symptoms and signs of COVID-19 and that they need to stay home if unwell. Now, as part of this, there are a number of specific work health and safety audits that you need to look at for your company. And this, it doesn't matter where you're sitting uh, within your agency. Um, it means that you need to look at specific audits that you need to do to make sure that you protect your workplace and um, employees within your company. So for employees, there are um, obligations that they need to follow as well. Employees of your agency and company need to follow specific requirements. Now, it's not all on yourselves as employers or directors and officers. Employees themselves need to isolate if they feel that they have any symptoms to prevent the spread. They need to seek advice if they are unsure. Um, they should avoid transport um, where um, they are sharing vehicles or they should be, uh, not share vehicles. They need to ensure that they clean and disinfect um, areas that they've used as well to identify and inform people around it and also review um, their own risk profiles that they might have in terms of spreading um, COVID-19 within the workplace. So this is particularly important for you to inform your employees on what their obligations actually are. And this is taken directly from Safe Work Australia. Equally, when we look at who is responsible for the COVID safe plan, there are a number of things that we've found that have worked incredibly well for many companies around the country. This is around ensuring that you have a COVID-19 daily assessment form that staff can fill out. Working from home approval forms as well too. Um, if you have workstations, you have a workstation register form, a cleaning register, and also ensure that staff are completing these as they need to as well. What we've found is that while you might have all these work health and safety forms that you um, have access through through Safe Work and the likes, it's around making sure that these are actually run within your agency and finding who is actually responsible for making sure that that is done. Once this is set up, it is simply quite straightforward to actually manage. Now, as part of this, um, on the dashboard, we have listed specific checklists. Um, and if as these have changed and been updated, we've updated these for agencies. It follows that what you can do to keep your workers safe. Um, what we have done is as we companies have started to move through stage one to stage two, or now stage two and looking at stage three, effectively reviewing their checklist, making sure that they've got the measures in place, um, identifying what they don't have, and that's the focus of it. So it's almost quite simply drilling it down to really a checklist process. The activities and the tasks can also be done around it on your dashboard, which you can see um, by simply clicking on the project details and this brings me back to this section here. One of the things that companies have asked is 
um, if how long do we need to keep this information for? At this stage, the COVID pandemic is not going to go away over the next couple of weeks. It's going to be with us, unfortunately, for some time. For companies like yourselves, it's important that you really document this information down, not just for your own record keeping basis, but also from a work health and safety point of view as well. If there are legal issues that come up because of a suspected outbreak within your company or if you're linked to it as well too, you need a reference source to actually go back to and show what you have done as well. And this will really allow you to do that. With a, uh, what we are recommending that agencies do is as part of your COVID safe plan is to have your set of policies that have been identified through WorkSafe um, or Safe Work Australia, as well as the Commonwealth and state governments, which we've covered off. Also looking at what pandemic forms you have as the checklist that I've shown you as well too. We will be sending you um, login details to have a look and access the demo site for your agency to see. What it'll do is actually give you the tools and resources quite simply and very quickly for you to have your COVID safe plan in place. It means that you've then got all of your plans, you've got your policies, you've got your form or pandemic checklist forms um, to effectively run through that. It doesn't need to be such an overbearing and um, it could well be an administrative challenge if you don't have some of these three things in place as well, or you may need to simply update some of your information. If you're a smaller agency, that we know we've got a lot of smaller agencies that have joined us, um, where it's only a handful of uh, staff that actually have, um, that they have working with them. Well then equally, it's very easy to manage that process, but the problem becomes then that, well, how do you manage all of the administrative duties that you have to have within a COVID safe plan? So again, some of these checklists that we've got for you as well too will give you that um, direction as well. If you're a larger agency with a couple of hundred odd staff in the challenge that you might have equally is managing different sites and, and the likes as well. And again, you've got access to this information to have a, have a look at it and utilize what you need to as well. With that, we, um, we will open up the phone lines and happy to stay on the line and answer any questions that people might have. Um, as always, we will hold the recording here and switch that off. If you do have any questions and you are watching this at a later stage, by all means, please contact us on 1300 360 360 or you can email us at support at gemba360.com.